wrestling and in my doubts in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea whoa you are the peace in my troubled sea Silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my to show Welcome to this week's Ebby Children at Home. Through the summer we're going to be looking at heroes of faith in the Bible. People who put their hope and their trust in God's power and goodness and who helped a lot of people as a result. And this week we're going to be looking at the story of Samuel. The events of this story happened a long time before Jesus came to, uh, to the earth. It all started when a lady called Hannah wanted a baby, but she couldn't have any. So she prayed really hard to God and God gave her a son. She named him Samuel, which means heard by God. I guess because she was really pleased that she had been heard by God. It was a time when God really needed people to listen to him. But they were all deaf to him. They were ignoring him. Even the priests who should have been listening to God were as completely deaf to God as everyone else and just as wicked. But now here came baby Samuel and things were about to change. Hannah knew that Samuel was a miracle baby. So she gave him to God, which meant that he went to live 
in God's holy tent of worship with the old priest um, called Eli. That's where Samuel grew up. And it was one night there when he was still a boy that Samuel heard something that would change his life and would change the history of his nation. I'd like you to join in with the story. We're going to read it from uh, Bob Hartman's Rhyming Bible. Um, and uh, there's a little bit of the rhyme that I'd like you to join in with, which comes up every so often. It is this. I've written it on a card for you. Old Eli, did you call me? Loud and clear and plain. Oh Eli, I just heard a voice shouting out my name. So do you think you could do that with me? Um, the first time we whisper it and then we shout it and then at the end we'll just say it normally. But you just copy me. And the other thing that I'd like you to join in with um, are the words on this card that I'll hold up once during the rhyme, which say, Speak, Lord, your servant hears. Now, obviously, there will be a few other random acting things that you could join in with. Just copy me or improvise. Just have fun. So let's go to the story of... I've forgotten the title. Uh, let me see. <laughs> um... Never mind, I'll tell you the title in the next scene. So this is the story of Samuel and the, and the uh, title in Bob Hartman's Rhyming Bible is Somebody's Calling My Name. Blind Eli was a priest and Samuel was a lad who helped the priest each day with every job he had. Together they served God inside the holy tent when Samuel's bedtime came, that's also where he went. And then one night the boy heard someone call his name. It frightened him, it did. He got up just the same. He went to Eli quick and whispered in his ear, as clearly as he could, so old Eli could hear. Old Eli, did you call me, loud and clear and plain? Oh Eli, I just heard a voice shouting out my name. It wasn't me, my boy. Now hurry off to bed. So Samuel scurried back. Cold shivers down his spine. He pulled the covers over and hoped that he'd be fine. But as he nodded off, the voice called out once more. He fell right out of bed and landed on the floor. He ran right back to Eli and shouted in his ear as clearly as he could so old Eli could hear. Old Eli, did you call me? Loud and clear and plain. Oh Eli, I just heard a voice shouting out my name. Eli was not happy. Old Eli was annoyed. It wasn't me, my boy. Go back to bed. So Samuel slipped away. On tippy toes he went, watching every shadow that danced around the tent. But when he hit the bed, Again he heard the voice. Back he flew to Eli. I really had no choice. Please don't say you're angry. He shouted through his tears. It's calling me again. I heard it loud and clear. Old Eli, did you call me? Loud and clear and plain. Oh Eli, I just heard a voice shouting out my name. Eli sat and listened. His head began to nod. The voice you heard, my boy, I think belongs to God. So if he calls again, don't worry and don't fear. Just answer him and say, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, your servant hears. So that's what Samuel did. When next he heard his name, God gave the boy a message and prophecies just came. To Samuel all his life, as boy grew into man, he heard the things God said and spread them through the land. Old Eli, did you call me? Loud and clear and plain. Oh Eli, I just heard a voice shouting out my name.
good story, isn't it? It's scary when we hear things at night, isn't it? I can imagine that Samuel was petrified when he heard somebody calling his name. He didn't recognise that it was God's voice. And uh, when we hear things at night, it's a bit scary, isn't it? But something I've learned is that we never have to be afraid because God is so good and so powerful and he loves us and he's always watching over us. So when you hear noises at night, just remember you don't have to be afraid because God is protecting you. Now we're going to look at a few things that the story of Samuel teaches us a bit later. But first, we're going to do some fun activities with Aunt Googly next door. So let's go. Well, hello, my little sugar puffs. How are we all today? Well, I hope. Today's story was all about listening to God. And uh, before we talk about actually listening to God, I thought it would be really fun to do some activities where we learn to listen really carefully to everyday noises around us. But for this, you will need something to write on, so a scrap piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. So if you just pause the video to go and get them and I'll see you in two ticks. Okay, now you have your paper and your pencil. We're going to be very still and very quiet and listen. And every time you hear something, I want you to write it down. And then at the end, we'll come back together, so to speak, and uh, we'll compare what we heard. So uh, off we go then, let's listen together. Oh, Zaza, are you ready? Um, I want you to join in too. Uh, are you ready? Oh yes, Zaza's ears are at the ready. I think you'll need two ears to listen though, Zaza. Oh yes, yes, that's good. So Zaza's ready to listen, we're ready to listen. Let's listen together. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stamp your feet. I wonder what noises you managed to hear. I'll tell you the ones that I managed to hear and see if you've got the same. So, I heard footsteps and then I heard whistling and then I heard a doorbell um, and then I heard singing um, and then I heard a fridge opening. That was a difficult one, that was. Um, and then the last one was the kettle boiling. Wow. I wonder how many of those you got. If you listen around your own home and see how many sounds you can hear. You did some very good listening, Zaza. In fact, you were such a good listener. I could see your ears twitching the whole time. And uh, I reckon that if you keep exercising those ears like that, Zaza, you will soon learn to fly. Look at that. Woo, yes. Right. Well, we're going to go outside now and then see what noises we can hear out there together. So, let's go. Okay, we're in the garden. So, now we've got to be very quiet and listen and see what we can hear. And we'll write it down again. Ready? Let's go.
I hope you managed to hear lots of things. I heard a bird and footsteps on the gravel and um, oh, I heard a car in the distance. I'm not sure if you would have heard that. And I heard a waterfall, the water running and um, a, a, a door banging closed and um, a hammer, hammering some wood. I wonder how many of those things you got. Okay, that was fun, wasn't it? And you can try this in your garden too. So let's go back and see what Sue's doing now, shall we? Well, thank you, Great Aunt Googly, for that listening activity. I hope you enjoy doing that. We can learn to listen better just by practicing. And it's the same with listening to God. The more we practice, the more we can recognize his voice. And the main way God speaks to us is through the Bible. We can use our imaginations when we read the Bible as well, because God's given us our imagination so that we can enter in to a world that perhaps we didn't notice before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read a little story from the Bible that you might or might not already know. But I want you to do is to use your imagination to enter right into the story and imagine you're there. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you smell? What can you feel? Imagine you're right there sitting at Jesus' feet while he's teaching everybody and see what he says to you. You might be surprised as he reveals to you things that you hadn't noticed before. So, Muggs is going to help us model what we need to do. So Muggs, if you just lie down, all right, make yourself comfy, okay, close your eyes. Okay, and at home, I'd like you to lie on the sofa, relax in the chair, but close your eyes because you're going to use your imaginations and see things in your mind. And I'm going to read from the Bible and uh, you, you uh, enter into the story. You're right there with Jesus. Here we go. One day, Jesus was teaching the people. The Pharisees and teachers of the law were there too. They had come from every town in Galilee, from Judea and Jerusalem. The Lord was giving Jesus the power to heal. There was a man there who was paralysed. Some men were carrying him on a mat. They tried to bring him in and put him down before Jesus. But because there were so many people there, they could not find a way to get to Jesus. So the men went up on the roof and made a hole through the ceiling. They lowered the mat so that the paralysed man was lying right before Jesus. Jesus saw that these men believed. So he said to the sick man, friend, your sins are forgiven. The Jewish leaders of the law and the Pharisees thought to themselves, who is this man? He is saying things that are against God. Only God can forgive sins. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said, Why do you have thoughts like that in your hearts? Which is easier, to tell this paralysed man your sins are forgiven or to tell him stand up and walk? But I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So Jesus said to the paralysed man, I tell you, stand up, take up your mat and go home. Then the man stood up before the people there. He picked up his mat and he went home praising God. All the people were fully amazed and began to praise God. They were filled with much respect and said, oh, today we have seen amazing things. Well, I hope you enjoyed entering into that story. Yes, you can get up now, Mugs. Open your eyes again. And when we do that, when we fully enter into the Bible and expect to hear, we often hear from God. Now, the next activity is something different, but another way that we can learn to listen to God. So God speaks to us the most often through the Bible, but he does use other things to speak to us as well, if we're listening. 
Samuel was called to be a prophet, someone who hears from God and gives messages from God to the people. Now, we're not all called to be prophets like Samuel was, but we can all hear from God in other ways. Sometimes in the most ordinary of ways, it's good because God loves us to listen to him and to get to know him better. Um, I've got here just a selection of everyday objects, just to give you an example of how we can learn to uh, listen to God in other ways. Um, for example, I've got some tape and a bulldog clip and a hole punch and a mug and some orange juice and just some various bits that I've found around the house just now. Now, as you go through your daily lives, sometimes you look at something and God is speaking to you through it. Something like this. I see a bulldog clip and it reminds me that God is holding everything together. He holds the whole world together. So that makes me think of God. Uh, what else? I see a carton of orange juice and I think, ah, oh, yeah, when we come to Jesus, he promises to refresh us. And uh, do you remember he said in the Bible, come to me, all you who are thirsty, and I will give you drink. Um, and whoever comes to me will have eternal life. And it reminds me of that passage in the Bible. And that makes me very happy to think of that. And uh, what else? Um, a banana. I might see a banana and think, oh, yes, just like a banana, God gives me energy. So various things. And I'm sure if, as you look at these things as well, that you might think, oh, that tells me that about God. So God can use our ordinary, everyday lives to speak to us about him if we're listening. Why not try this at home with your own family and have some fun with it? OK, so here's another fun thing we can do to get better at hearing from God. I've got here lots of different words. There um, lots of different gifts and abilities and qualities that we see in people. And uh, God has put all of these things in different people because he's made us all to be like him, to be full of really good things. Now, the trouble is with human beings, we're all a bit messed up. So all of these good things can get hidden or buried or become totally invisible. But God wants to draw these good qualities out of all of his children. So what I want you to do is um, you might want to pause the video at this point and uh, read through all of these words. And then I want you to, to write down three of them that you particularly admire when you see them in other people. So. I'm not going to spend all my time reading them. You can just pause the video and read them for yourself. So do that now. Okay, now you've read through all of them. I hope you've chosen three that you particularly admire when you see that in other people. Or maybe you chose more. Doesn't matter. What I want to tell you is those things that you recognise as really admirable qualities are probably things that God sees in you. And he's telling you, I love you, you're great. This is how I made you. Go for it because you've got such wonderful qualities and I want you to value being you. And if you think, oh, I'm not sure I want to say that I'm good at this and good at that and I'm this and that, because that sounds a bit big headed. Don't worry about that. God has made us all great and wonderful and he wants you to value you and value other people so go ahead enjoy being you and uh, just become the person that God originally created you to be this brings me to our final activity where we can learn to listen to God we're going to learn to listen to God to give encouraging words to other people because that's what God likes us to do. In the Bible, it says that we are to encourage one another. Uh, and one of the ways I like to do this, it's a bit of a fun way, is to think of an animal. Uh, Jesus does this. He uh, likens all of his followers to sheep. Now, sheep are adorable. They're cute and fluffy, but they're a bit woolly in the head. 
and they often go off on their own and uh, they go astray and they get lost and uh, they're a bit silly because they follow each other even when they're doing silly things and they need a shepherd to look after them to show them the right way to go and uh, yeah, generally to make sure they don't get into trouble and to rescue them when they do. So Jesus likens us to sheep. So when we're thinking of other people and we want to give them an encouraging word, think of an animal. Right, you at home, just think of an animal. The first one that comes into your mind. I wonder what it is. Okay, I thought of a penguin. Okay, that was the first one that came into my mind. Now, I've got some names of you in here. All you children, I think, are watching at home. And I'm going to pull one out and then I'm going to tell you what I think God might be telling you to do with a penguin. Here we go. Who is it? It's Dylan. Okay, Dylan, this is what I think through the picture of a penguin that God might be uh, wanting me to encourage you through that picture. Well, first of all, penguins are very good at uh, huddling together and looking after their family. And uh, I think God has put in you qualities that will enable you to look after your family, to, to know that family is really precious and uh, to, to keep close, all right? So that's an encouraging encouragement to you, Dylan, to keep close to your family and to be someone who really cares. Now, what else might I think about a penguin? Penguins are very sociable creatures. Whenever I see a penguin on one of these nature programs, they're, they're often together in groups. And uh, I think you're a very friendly person and that's what God wants to really encourage in you. All right, so a couple of things. Dylan, I had a picture of a penguin for you. Just one more. We can't do them all because of the sake of time. Uh, but you can do this at home. So one more. Here we go. I'm going to think of an animal. And you think of an animal as well. See what comes into your mind. Um, okay. So I thought of a goat for this one. Right. Jess. I've got Jess. Okay, lovely things about goats, Jess, which I think God might be wanting me to encouraging you about. So first, the first thing I think about a goat is they're really funny. They, they make me laugh. Whenever I see a goat, it brings a smile to my face because they, are, they skip along. They all often f seem to be quite joyful and they don't mind what they eat. <laughs> I don't know whether you're a fussy eater, Jess. Maybe you're not. Maybe you're like a goat and you like to eat lots of different things. But through that, I think um, Jesus is telling me that you are open to new ideas, that you're one of these people that loves to learn. And uh, just like a goat would go up to anything and think, oh, can I eat this? You go up to things and, you, and, and you're excited by them and you bring joy to other people because you're so positive in wanting to learn from life and to make the most of it. You're one of these joyous people. So I think that's how Jesus would like to encourage you, Jess. So you get the idea. As I say, I'd love to go through all of you and, and give you one of those funny animal encouragements. But that's something you can do. Think of an animal, the first one that comes into your mind. Then think of the person you want to encourage and write down what you think God might be saying. And then share it with them because it will bring a smile to their face and a spring to their step. And that's what God wants us to do is to encourage and build each other up. So there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story of Samuel and uh, learning to listen with Aunt Googly and learning to listen to God. Keep practising those things, um, especially reading the Bible and learning to listen to God through the Bible. And now Rodri is going to finish our time together with a prayer. So it's goodbye from us. Father, please speak to us and help us to hear you. Thank you that you speak through the Bible, through our dreams, through our imagination, through creation, and in our everyday ordinary lives. Thank you that you love us and want to speak to us. And thank you that you say your sheep hear your voice. Oh, now there's a thought. I wonder, do you have a Welsh accent? Anyway, Please help us to remember to listen. Amen.